get a brag on the blood of Christ a little bit this morning, Amen. the grace of God. Romans chapter 3. <clears throat> and, uh, over the last couple of weeks, we've been looking at what the Bible calls Paul's gospel. Uh, he refers to it as my gospel numerous times. This, this gospel, he said, was... was not given to him by man, for he neither received it of man, neither was he taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Well, Paul's preaching here in the book of Romans was something given to him by revelation of Jesus Christ. It was taught to him from heaven. And so far, as we've been looking at the gospel of Paul, what, what we're, the Bible refers to as Paul's gospel, what we've seen so far is, number one, God's wrath is revealed upon all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. We've seen that back in Romans 1.18. God has revealed his wrath from heaven. And it's against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. And what Paul's talking about there is, is men know the truth. Men know it. They, Paul, Paul said they hold the truth in unrighteousness. Now they, that doesn't mean they know what me and you know. I mean we, we, have a, we have a level of truth that they don't know and understand. But what they do know is that there is a God, Gary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what they do know is that they're guilty before this God. Yeah. And they don't care. Right. Paul said they hold the truth in unrighteousness. Yeah. Their own unrighteousness will not allow them to acknowledge mm -hmm. God. They don't want God. They have no room for Him in their life because of their own unrighteousness. All right. The second thing we saw is that there's a day in which God is going to judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel, Romans 2.16. Yeah. And so God's wrath is revealed and there's a day of judgment coming. Amen. Paul, we, we, we looked at it that Romans chapter, Romans chapter 1, Paul says three times, God gave them up, God gave them up, God gave them over. Mm. This is what Paul refers to in Acts 14 as times past in which God suffered all nations to walk in their own ways. But uh, Romans, uh, or Acts chapter 17, Paul said the times of this ignorance, God once winked at, but now commandeth all men. Right here. But now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Asians, Australians, New Zealanders, Samoans, it don't matter. God, there was a time in which God allowed the nations. He allowed the Indians to go after Hindu. He allowed the Egyptians to have their mythology and he allowed the Romans and the Greeks to do what they wanted to. But now he commands all men everywhere to repent. Why? Because he's appointed a day out here. Yeah. Right here at this line, he's appointed a day in which he's going to judge the world in righteousness. Amen. The day is coming in which God's going to judge the world. Amen. And so in Romans chapter 3, we looked at the verses last week. I just want to skim over them real quick. Beginning in verse 9, this is the conclusion. What then? Are we better than they? No and no wise. For we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin. Now let me say, let me say I'm glad I was born in America, Bill. Yeah. You know, if I had to live somewhere on this earth, I'm glad it's America. Yeah. And I wouldn't try, I mean, you know, I wouldn't, you know, I, I, y'all hear me th say things about America, but I love my country. Yeah, I I, I'm glad I'm from here, and I thank God for the freedoms that we have in this country. Yeah. But Americans will go to hell just like an African. That's right. Yeah. And Americans will go to hell just like a just like a drug cartel man, just like a man in the drug cartel from Mexico or El Salvador. Mm -hmm. Americans are listen. That you can't look at any race of people on this earth and say are they better than than this one or that one? No, and no wise. If ever a nation of people on this earth could have, could have truly said we're better than they, it was the Jews. But Paul said both Jews and Gentiles are all under sin. Yeah. They're all yeah. under it. They're all guilty. Mm -hmm. All right? The condemnation has come, man. The judgment's come. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. People don't find God, God finds them. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. There's none that seeketh after God. Amen? <clears throat> God comes looking for them and calls man by the gospel. Amen? But there's none that seek. They're all gone out of the way. 
That, that means the whole creation is now out of the original order that God created and every man is out of the way. He says that they are together become unprofitable. The whole world is now unprofitable to God. It's of no value to Him. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. That's something, man. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. You see how much different this is than, than the way man talks of <laughs> Oh, I believe, you know, we believe the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man. There's a divine spark in every man and every man's, you know, got a little bit of God and all of us and all this nonsense. God said they're all out of the way and they're all unprofitable. Yeah. <laughs> There's none that doeth good. There's not even a man that doeth good. That, 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 that's a quotation from the Old Testament that said there's not a just man upon earth that doeth good and sinneth not. There's none that doeth good, no, not one. Their throat is an open sepulchre. With their tongues they have used the seat, the poison of asps is under their lips. That, that means that the asp goes takes you back to Satan. The poison of the live Satan is under our lips. Mm -hmm. Think about that, man. That, 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 that we have the power, the poison of, of the lies of Satan in our tongue. Whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. You ever heard man curse God? Yeah. That's something, man. Ruckman used to say, he, he, he used to say all the time, he said, when I got on an airplane, man, he said, I blessed everything <laughs> from, from, from the tunnel all the way to the pilot. <laughs> yeah. You say, why? He said, I was removing all the GDs people and put on it before I got there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he said, I'd get on an airplane, and a man was GD in the stewardess, and GD in the plane, and GD in the, 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 cap, the captain of the plane. And I looked at him and said, you better hope God don't answer them prayers. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Their mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways in the way of peace. Have they not known there's no fear of God before their eyes? Verse 19 now. Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law. You don't need a Bible to know that and understand that. When you go out here on the interstate, if the speed limit says 65 and a man pulls you over for doing 70, even though it was just five miles over, you have no argument. Okay. If you do 100, I mean, the, the man could technically pull you over for doing 68 if he really want, if he wanted to be a jerk about it, but you would still have no argument. If you're doing 68 and 65, you're guilty. I mean, you don't need a Bible to teach you this. What things soever the law say that say to them who are under the law. Why? That every mouth may be stopped. Now here's why God gave his law. That every mouth may be stopped. And all the world may become guilty before God. That's why God gave his law. Sin was here already. Since when Adam sinned in the garden, sin was in the world. But sin is not imputed when there is no law. That's Romans chapter 5. So why did God give his law? To make us all guilty before him. From Adam to Moses, men were not violating any laws of God. Thank God there was sin. But God hadn't revealed sin. God hadn't given the knowledge of sin. Yeah. Man was doing what was right in his own eyes. Sin was in the world, but it wasn't sin until God said, Thou shalt not. Amen. Yeah. And then once man, uh, once God gave that law, all men became transgressors. Not just sinners, but that's why Paul said the commandment made sin exceeding sinful. And so God only gave the law to make us guilty, to show us our guilt. Mm. Amen? Mm. But you understand, the Bible says thou shalt not bear false witness. You ever done it? Mm, yeah. I have. I mean, if we really want to go through all ten, this bad boy's broke all ten of them. <laughs> yeah. I mean, people walk around, all, you know, the, the, the rich man, all the all this have I done for my youth. You blind dog. You just bear false witness of yourself right there. Amen. Have no other gods before me. Jesus pegged him. He said, yeah, thou lackest one thing. Sell all that you have and follow me. Yeah. Couldn't do it. So what? What was that? He had a God before God. Yeah. Amen? Yep. Yep. But you, you, you take the law, you know what it says. Don't bear fault. You know what the law says? Don't lust. 
Have fun with that one. <laughs> yeah. Thou shalt not covet. Right? So what's the conclusion? Verse number 20. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. That by the deeds of the law, no flesh shall be justified. The word justified means to be declared free of guilt. Mm -hmm. And by the deeds of the law, there can no flesh be declared free of guilt in the sight of God. Why? For by the law is the knowledge of sin. What the law does is bring knowledge of your sin. Therefore, God cannot declare a man free of guilt by the law because the law reveals his sin. And God's not unrighteous. If he finds sin, he's going to judge it. And a man that's guilty before God will receive according to his deeds. Paul already said that back in Romans 2, 6. In the, uh, he, he says he will render to every man according to his deeds. And so the law cannot justify. Why did God give it? Uh, over in Romans chapter 7, he gave it to manifest sin. Paul said it was added. You see, God, God gave a bunch of promises back here to Abraham. And then he, he comes over here and he says, What then serveth the law? For what purpose? He said it was added. Added to what? The promises. He said the law was added because of transgressions until the seed came to whom the promises were made. The promises were made to Jesus Christ. God added the law because of transgressions until Christ came. Mm -hmm. He said so then the law was our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ that we might be justified by faith. Amen. The law served no other purpose than to manifest our sin, make us guilty before God so that we would come to Christ to be justified by faith. Amen? Amen? I, I, I mean, this I don't understand why people have so, such a hard time with the gospel. I don't have a hard time with it. You know why? Because I know who I am and I know without Him I'm hopeless. Yeah, amen. Right. Coming to Christ was a, was, was a, was no, a no brainer. Right. Yeah. It was a no brainer. If there's a holy God that declares righteousness, I don't have it. Amen. And so coming to Christ wasn't even a question. Yeah. And people run around, oh, I'm just as good as somebody else. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I mean, no, no, you're probably not. Yeah, yeah. Second of all, even if you are, who cares? They're going to stand before God too. And you talk about the hypocrites at the church. Well, them hypocrites are going to heaven. Yeah. yeah. You say, how are they going to get there? Because there are some people in this world that God's not going to impute sin to. <laughs> yeah. And Amen. David calls them blessed. Amen. Amen. And so, but listen, the, the, the first step. The first step of salvation is knowing God's wrath and acknowledging your guilt before Him. Man will not come to Christ until he first sees his guilt. And so Paul, Paul said, we know that the law is good if a man uses it lawfully. Knowing this, that the law was not made for a righteous man, but for the disobedient, for the ungodly, and for the unrighteous. The law was made for, for ungodly men to condemn them. Yeah. That's what the law is made for. If, if, if nobody ever murdered, I wouldn't need to pass a law that says thou shalt not kill. Mm -hmm. but, but the law was not put there to keep you from killing, Gary. Yeah. It was there to condemn you when you did. That's the purpose of the law. And so God's law was given to manifest our guilt so that we would come to Christ. And, and until a man understands his guilt before God and God's wrath, he will not come to Calvary. That's just all there is to it. All right, a lot of times people, people try to bypass this, this part of the gospel about the wrath of God and man's guilt. And it's part of the gospel. God's wrath is part of the gospel. All right, now verse 21 is where we're going to really pick up some more. I love these verses right through here. Read verse 20 again. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. Wouldn't it be sad if Paul ended that epistle right there? Yeah. yeah. Amen? People, people think, well, as long as my good works outweigh my bad works, go try that one in an earthly court and see how good it works. Yeah. I know I shot three little kids in the face with a, with a, with a high-powered rifle, but 
But hang on, Judge. You know, five years ago, I fed this person and that person, and then, you know, I helped this old lady across the street. That judge don't care what you do. The, by, the scales of justice is to find out the, 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 the punishment that fits the crime. It's to balance back out justice. God's not concerned with your good works, even though he already said earlier in the chapter, there's none that doeth good. Yeah. All right? What God is what what God has declared is that the whole world is guilty before Him, and the 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 the, the gospel would be sad. But verse twenty one says, "But now, right here, Amen. but now." And we're not talking about the revelation of God's forgiveness. He's forgave man since Adam. Yeah. You go back there and look at David. David committed murder and adultery, and God Nathan comes to him and says. God has put away thy sin and thou shalt not die. Mm. And people's like, how can God do that? They didn't understand. He's hard on Saul, but he's, he's lenient on David. Solomon brought idols in the temple of God. Yeah. And the Bible even said that he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. Yeah. But then you know what it says about him? Yet there was not a king like unto Solomon whom the Lord loved. Yeah. Yeah. Think about it. People say, how could God do that? They didn't understand. God showed grace and He showed mercy and He showed forgiveness for 4,000 years since the fall of Adam, but man didn't understand it until now. Mm -hmm. God has revealed His, not His forgiveness, He's revealed His righteousness without the law. It wasn't, look at verse 25 of Romans 3, you'll see what I'm talking about. God has now declared His righteousness halfway through the verse for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. Mm -hmm. God has forbear sin from here onward. <laughs> Paul, even, Paul even said, he, he, said he, he said the times of this ignorance God once winked at. Yeah. God has been forbearing sin for 4,000 years and then when Christ died it declared His righteousness for the remission of sins that were passed through His forbearance. Mm -hmm. God tolerated it for 4,000 years and now His righteousness in doing so is declared. Meaning that all men from Adam to Christ, their sins were ultimately paid for by the blood of Christ. Mm. Amen. Amen. God, we're not talking about uh, uh, God, the revelation of God's forgiveness or His grace. We're talking about the revelation of God's righteousness. And this righteousness, listen, we're not talking about God's righteousness revealed in the law. The righteousness of God revealed in the law is that He's going to render to every man according to His deeds. Right. Yeah. The righteousness of God without the law is God's righteousness that freely justifies a man for no reason in the man himself. Yeah. And so God's righteousness of the law is to give a man eye for eye, tooth for tooth. The righteousness of God without the law is freely justifying a man. Amen. God's righteousness is declared for both. His righteousness in condemning man is revealed and His righteousness in justifying man is revealed. And man has no argument either way. If you go to hell, He's just. If you go to heaven, He's just. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the arguments have ceased today. They only exist out here with man running their chops without reading the Bible. Man comes up with all these hypotheticals. And they sit down here and they strive about words to no profit because they don't read the book. Yeah. These things are revealed from heaven. There's no issue on God's wrath. It's revealed. There's no issue on God's judgment. It's revealed. There's no issue on how God can righteously let a man into heaven. It's manifest. It's revealed. The issue only exists in the ignorance of man. Yeah. You're right. Amen. Romans 4, 6 through 8. Listen to this. Some of my favorite verses. If anybody knew this, it was David. Even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works. Mm -hmm. There's not a more blessed man on this earth this morning than a man who has righteousness given to him by God without works. Yeah. You can't find one. Listen, listen to how David describes the blessedness of this man, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven mm. and whose sins are covered. 
Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Mm. There are some men that, that God is not going to make them pay for their sin. There are some men that God is not going to render unto them according to their deeds. Do they have sin? Yes, the whole world's guilty before God. But there are some men that God's not going to impute sin to. And instead of imputing their sin to them, He imputes righteousness to them. Mm. You see people running around saying, I'm just as good as so-and-so. Well, keep thinking like that, and you and so-and-so is going to have what, what you've earned rendered to you at the judgment. Yeah. That line of thinking about works and my own righteousness is going to lead you to a judgment one day in which God is going to give you what you've earned. Yeah. You understand? <laughs> but before that day comes, God's offering man what he has not earned. Yeah, amen. And that is righteousness and justification freely. It's without works. That's what David said. Paul, Paul said David described what? The blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works. It's a righteousness he didn't earn. Yeah. Amen. God's going to render to every man according to his deeds. But I don't want that. I don't want what I've earned, Gary. Yeah. Amen. I know where it's going to get me. Yeah. And so I accepted God's free gift. Amen. And, and God imputes righteousness and justification to them freely. Yeah. There are people on earth that say, oh, you know, so and so's going, I am. What yeah. count on? <laughs> People say, oh, all them, all them hypocrites down there at the church. Listen, a man that goes to church every Sunday that stands up and says, I'm nothing but a sinner saved by grace, that's not a hypocrite. That's right. The hypocrites are the one saying that they're righteous when they're not. A man that goes to church every Sunday and says, I'm just an old sinner saved by the grace of God, and I, 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 I need the blood of Christ just as much today as I've ever needed it. I'm still not perfect. I still have sin. How's that a hypocrite? Amen. The hypocrites are the ones standing outside the church calling everybody else hypocrites. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, you're right. They don't understand, man, that, that you, you, people's going to stand before the judgment one day down here at the, at the great white throne and God's going to render to them according to their deeds and they're going to see me standing up there in glory. You know? Yeah. And like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I know Paul Lucas. I know him. But you see, their argument's not going to be with me and what I've done. Their argument's going to be with God's righteousness. Yeah, yeah. They're not going to have any argument against Him throwing them into hell. And they're not going to have any argument with Him not throwing me into hell. Both are by His righteousness. Mm -hmm. God is righteous in justifying. He's righteous in condemning. Both have been revealed from heaven. Romans 8, 33, I love it. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Well, my wife can. Mm -hmm. yeah. You find stuff on Bill Doors? Huh? Do you what? lay anything what? to the charge of God's elect there? <laughs> <laughs> Let me get a wind of that. <laughs> I guarantee you my boys, my boys can find flaw in me. My wife can find flaw in me. Marsha's got Tony Peg. Oh, and <laughs> Jessica's got, Jessica's what? got Gary down. And, and, and Marlene's got Kenny. And, Amen. <laughs> Amen. If you follow any saint around long enough, you're going to find a flaw in sin. That's right. Yeah. You say, you say, well, not me. Are you without understanding? Because <laughs> God says without understanding is worthy of death. Yeah. One of the things God condemns man with is there is none that understandeth. Yeah. We was talking about that this morning. Man don't understand their purpose in the creation. They, they, they walk around in the vanity of their mind having the understanding darkened. And that's why man has become unprofitable to God. Is they're out of the way. They're, they're, they're leaning to their own understanding of things. And it's man's own understanding and his own, his own thinking that destroys him. And, and so God, but listen, when, when, when you understand truly what sin is, you start to see it. And if you really got down to it, you could lay a charge against all of God's elect if you wanted to. But Paul said, who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies. Yeah. 
Amen. Who is he that condemneth that is Christ that died? Yea, rather is risen again. Who even sitteth at the right hand of God and maketh intercession for us. Amen. Amen. God's righteousness has been revealed. What righteousness is it? The righteousness of God in justifying sinners. Amen. Look at verse 22. Even Now verse 21 says it's without the law. Being witnessed by the law and the prophets. What the law and the prophets witnessed was the sufferings of Christ and the resurrection. He says, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ. Now here's one of my issues with all the new Bibles. Every single one of them. That word of, they change it to faith in Christ. My faith, my faith in Christ doesn't reveal God's righteousness. Right, right. It's the faith of Christ that reveals God's righteousness in justifying man. You have to get that. What, what's he talking about here, the faith of Christ? Well, it revealed it's the righteousness of God just by faith of Jesus Christ. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is God's power and the salvation. Everyone to believe it. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed. In what? In the gospel of Christ. The faith of Christ and the gospel of Christ are, are, are interchangeable here. Mm -hmm. Paul said in Galatians chapter 3. Let me read, read it to you. Galatians chapter 3. In verse 22 he said, But the scripture hath concluded all under sin. That the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. The promise came by the faith of Christ. You say, how do you know that? Verse 23, but before faith came, we were kept under the law. Was there faith in the Old Testament, folks? Mm -hmm. Noah by faith built an ark. Abraham by faith left the land of his father. Abel by faith offered a more excellent sacrifice. So before faith came, we were kept under the law. There was, there was faith in the Old Testament. Paul's talking about a specific faith here. What is it? It's the faith of Christ. Mm -hmm. He said, but before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith, which should afterward be revealed. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. Why? For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. What a thing. You believed in Christ? Yes. Then you're a child of God by faith in Christ. Don't let, don't let, don't let any religious maniac talk you out of that. Because <laughs> yeah. there will be many that try. Well, I believe that, but. And when you say but, that means you don't believe it. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. Have you believed in Christ? You're all the children of God by faith. But it's not just believing in Christ. It's believing the faith of Christ. How that He died for our sins, was buried, and rose again the third day. There's a lot of people that think He was a great man. And, you know, He spoke great proverbs. And He gave us a great example to follow. But the faith of Christ is that He died, was buried, and rose again. And through that death, burial, and resurrection, God is now righteous and justifying sinful man. Yeah. Amen. I'm trusting, Brother Bill, yeah. that right there. Yeah. The faith of Christ. Amen. Paul, Paul said that the righteousness of God in justifying man is not through the law. His righteousness in justifying man is by the faith of Christ. Mm. What Christ did and that alone. Look at what he said. You, you know, the, 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 Paul, Paul said the Jews missed this. He, 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 said, he said, for the Jews being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness and not submitting themselves unto the righteousness of God. Submitting to God's righteousness. All right, look at what he says, verse 22. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, which is unto all. All. Not the elect, like, like Calvin and them taught, God's righteousness that justifies man is unto all men. It's unto all. Male, female, Jew, Gentile, the wise man, the fool, the soccer mom, and the serial killer. Mm. Amen, brother. Yeah. Son of Sam got saved. Yeah. Isn't that something? 
I watched a story one time about a man about a man that 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 robbed the man and woman at gunpoint and buried him alive. They were Christian people. The man and woman that he buried alive were Christians. And he sat there and held them at gunpoint and robbed them and stripped them of their clothes and buried them in a shallow grave. And they sat there and suffocated. And the whole time that man could hear that woman in the dirt praying for him. Mm. That man ended up getting caught and going to prison and he got saved. And now the daughter of that, of that, of that man and woman that he killed, they're best friends. And she calls him a brother in Christ. Mm. Think about that. Man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, folks, God's, God's, God's righteousness to justify man is to all men. I know, I know people have a hard time getting their head wrapped around that, but it's unto all. The most vile of us. Look at what he says. He says it's unto all and it's upon all them that what? Believe. Yeah. It's upon all that believe. What must I do to be saved? Acts 16, 31. Paul said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Amen. You say, preacher, we know all this. Be yeah, but it's good to hear it again. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Because I promise you, man, I promise you that, that since the last time you've heard it, everything that you've heard since then has been contrary to what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Man can't receive this. Man don't understand this. You know who this righteousness is revealed to? It's revealed to them that believe. The world can't see it. Yeah. Paul said Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. If a man hasn't believed in Christ, then he's still trying to establish his own righteousness by works. That is scary about a lot of people that you've come in contact with that you hope are saved, but probably are not because if they had believed, Christ would have been, it, he would have become the end of the law for righteousness. Right. Amen. Amen. The righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. <clears throat> As it is written, the just shall live by faith. It's unto all and upon all them that believe. There's a few more things here and I'll, I'll be done. It's upon all, it's unto all and upon all them that believe. Why? For there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Mm. Now, when you, when you try to get your next door neighbor to understand that there's no difference between him and a pedophile, that's where, he, that's where, he'll, that's where he'll fall out. Yeah. Yep, yep. It's harder, listen man, I've preached to homeless drunks and I've preached to, to people living in rich neighborhoods. It is hard. You, it, they are more cold in the nice neighborhoods than they are at the homeless missions. I've preached, in, I've preached to homeless men in missions before and, and you get 10 minutes in and the tears are already flowing out of their face. And they'll come up to you, some of them you can't even barely stand to be around them, they stink so bad. And they'll come up and be like, you mean to tell me Jesus loves this old drunk? You say, yeah, that's what I mean to tell you. <laughs> Not only that, he died for that old homeless drunk. Yeah. yeah. And I've been in some of them neighborhoods, man, where the people meet you at the door and say, you need to take that to another neighborhood. We don't need it here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, boy. Yeah. This righteousness of God, listen, there is no difference. You go, you, you, when you, 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 and sometimes Christians have a hard time understanding this. When you drive down, when you drive by this mission up here in Fairmont, or whatever time of day it is, I've been up there multiple times and they start gathering out there, I guess they're getting ready to serve dinner or whatnot. When you drive by them men, you need to understand there's not a difference between them and your next door neighbor. That's yes. right. You're right. Amen. Yes. God said there is no difference for all sin to come short of the glory of God, and this is where man has a problem. They can't get their head around how God can forgive a pedophile and a murderer. You know what? They do? When a man's got that line of thinking, he truly despises the goodness of God. Let me tell you something, man. The lake of fire is no joke, and God knows it. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. we, 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 we sit up here, man, and we don't, we don't understand or comprehend how bad that is. You want to know how bad the lake of fire is? God did this trying to keep you out of it. Yeah. Yeah. And Christ was willing to go through this to keep you out of it. Burning for your sin forever is not a joke. And it's not anything that God, God's not willing that any man perish. Yep. Not willing that any. 
Because God knows how awful the place is. And so the question is, not how bad is a man. The question is, is God willing? Well, Paul said, God will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Yeah. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Is God willing? Yes. Is he righteous in justifying a pedophile and a murderer? Yes. Yeah. In fact, I, 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 I mean, folks, you've you got to get that when it comes to the gospel. It has nothing to do with what we consider right and wrong and how much better we think we are than somebody. It has to do with God's individual relationship towards His creatures. Yeah. And He's not willing that any of them go to hell regardless of what they've done. And God will let that pedophile into heaven and He will throw your neighbor into hell for not accepting His righteousness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you say, I don't agree with it. You take it up with Him at His throne. Yeah. And tell God He's unrighteous. <laughs> I like what He asked Job that time. He said, Will thou condemn me yeah. that thou mayest be righteous, Job? Will you really? He said, Are you willing to call me unrighteous so that you can claim to your own righteousness? Yeah. Yeah. And that's what people are doing in pulpits all across America. They're saying God's unrighteous so that they can hold on to their own righteousness. Last verse, look at, look at verse 24. We'll finish this chapter next, next Sunday, but verse 24 is really, it's one of those verses, man, you just need to decorate your house with and quote to you, quote in your head about 20 times a day because it's just a beautiful verse. Even the, verse 22, even the righteousness of God is by faith of Jesus Christ under the law and upon all them that believe for there is no difference. Why? For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Being justified freely. Mm. I love that verse, man. Mm -hmm. Being justified freely. What does that mean? I, I, well, we talked about it Sunday school this morning. I got so excited, I got I jumped, jumped the gun and talked about it Sunday school. <laughs> Think about what that verse is truly saying. Being. It, that's a state, that's, that's a present state of existence. I'm a being, right? And right now I'm being, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm in this state of. I've been, listen, I am right now presently justified. That means in the past. Yeah. Think about that. I am presently declared free of all guilt. Amen. I'm declared innocent right now. <laughs> yeah. people, 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 people run around and they say, what if? <laughs> yeah. Look, look at the next word, freely. What if? Somebody walks up to me and I can say, you know what? I'm going to give Gary, I'm going to give Gary, I don't have this kind of money, so don't get excited, Gary. <laughs> but I, but I, say, I, I, say, I say, I'm going to give Gary uh, a billion dollars free. And you know, you know what that makes Gary? That makes him a billionaire. Amen. All right, now, now you, 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 you would read a verse that says, says, Gary has been made a billionaire freely, you know. And I say, I give it to you freely. And you say, what if Gary, like, Two weeks down the road flips you off. What's that got to do with anything? Yeah. What does that have to do with anything? I gave him this money freely. I tell my son, I say, I'll give you $20. What well, for? No reason. I love you. Here's $20. That's grace. If I turn around and say, I want that $20 back, you didn't cut the grass. <laughs> That's not grace any longer. <laughs> God justified me freely. So you take all the what ifs and get rid of them. They don't mean anything. Yeah. They, they it's only exist in man's ignorance. They don't understand the righteousness of God. God is now righteous, and if he put any stipulation on it, you know what that would mean? You would fail. And you would be in the same boat you were before Christ died. For yeah. You. Right. And so God, God understands that the only way He can do this thing is if He does it freely by His grace. Yeah. And He did that for you. And, he is, and this, this right here made Him righteous. 
And so He can now righteously and freely justify all men that believe on His Son. And He was willing to do that because He don't want you going to hell. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. And that's really what it comes down to. Now when it comes to about living the Christian life, we're going to get to that in Romans chapter 6. But it absolutely has nothing to do with you being freely justified. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing. Nothing at all. Being justified freely by His grace. Through, now here's, this is God's righteousness, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Yeah. It's not, it's not free. It, it costs something. You bet. But it didn't cost me a thing. Right. Yeah, yeah, right. It's through what Christ did at Calvary. Amen. That's what made God righteous right there. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yeah. If he would have judged me by his law, I would have seen the righteousness of God as he cast me into hell. Mm -hmm. I would have had no argument. But now when I, when I get to set in heaven forevermore and, and in the ages to come, I love that part of amazing grace. When we've been there 10,000 years bright shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first began. Yeah. And in the ages to come, but you know what it's going to be then? I'm not going to be sitting there and talking about my righteousness, Gary. Yeah. I'm going to be there to praise the glory of His grace wherein He hath made us accepted in the beloved. We are going to praise the righteousness of God which justified us freely mm -hmm. forevermore. Amen. He's a he's righteous man. And I'm, I'm thankful for this righteousness of God without the law. It's through the redemption that is in Christ that is by His grace. And when you truly understand grace, grace is when God gives, gives a man something that he hasn't earned. Yeah. Mercy's, mercy is God not giving man what he deserves. Grace is giving man what he has not earned. And so God has freely given us things by his grace. And as we saw this morning, this grace was given to us in Christ before the world began. Hmm. <laughs> think about that, man. We sit and think about it all the time, you know. If God determined to do that back here, Bill, how in the world am I going to do anything up here in time yeah. to make God change his mind about what he determined to do before the world began? Yeah. <laughs> All things work together for good to them that love God and are the called according to his purpose. Mm. You say, if I believe like that, I would just do what I wanted to do. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. The only thing, only, only excuse man does, only excuse man needs to keep doing what he wants to do is to keep denying the righteousness of God. Yeah. Man acts like salvation gives them a license to sin. Yeah. They already have a license to sin. Man's out here doing what he wants to do anyway. Even when it comes to religion, he's doing what he wants to do. When it comes to good works, he decides what a good work is. Yeah. When it comes to justifying himself to God, he decides what justifies himself to God. Man's doing what he wants to do anyway, Gary, mm. with or without grace. Amen? And then you're going to condemn God for His righteousness? That's what people's doing. They're condemning God's righteousness and justifying sinners. I'm not going to do it. Yeah. I'm just going to get on my face and thank Him. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Thank Him, Amen. Lord. Amen. He gives us so much more than justification. We'll finish Romans chapter 3 next week. The, the conclusions down there, verse 25, 26, 27, 28, those four verses are chock full, man. That's where Paul truly declares God's righteousness is in verse 25 20, and 26 to declare his righteousness. Amen. We'll, we'll pick up with it next week. Our great Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you.